How did a soft-spoken Irish guy from a tiny speck on Chicago's South Side become Illinois' most powerful person? Some politicians are show horses, some are workhorses. Mike Madigan definitely was a workhorse. Mike Madigan has been in Illinois politics for as long as Winona Ryder has been alive. And he started his record-breaking term as Speaker of the Illinois House when a Honda Accord looked like this. State rep I know jokes that uh, she's been to the funerals of two men who thought they were going to replace Speaker Madigan, but they died waiting for him to, to move on. All that's going to change soon. After 50 years of public service, Mike Madigan has resigned from the Illinois House of Representatives. Leaving behind a complicated, messy legacy for Illinois. You know, just like people don't like Tom Brady or Tiger Woods, when you outwork people, then your opponents don't like you. He's also leaving behind a playbook for how to get in power, stay in power, and fly under the radar in any situation where you can use the phrase cutthroat. Lesson one, keep quiet. Madigan was infamous for not having a cell phone or email, preferring to get word and send word through the people he trusted. He picked up that skill as a political youngin, working with the granddaddy of Chicago bosses, Mayor Richard J. Daley. He relied on Madigan to come at the end of each week. Daley was getting lots of reports from a lot of people, but he wanted Mike Madigan to come into the rec room in the basement there at 3536 South Low in Bridgeport and give him a personal face-to-face -face report. No paper trail, no transcript, no trouble. He didn't necessarily trust Madigan any more than he trusted the others, but he came to make him perhaps the first among equals. Lesson two kill them softly. The nickname Madigan picked up over 50 years sounds more like a stiff drink, the Velvet Hammer. In Madigan's world though, the best punishment for political enemies always goes down smooth. He was always very quiet. He was never one uh, given to bombast. Sometimes he'd be infuriated, enraged, uh, and the only way you would know it is uh, from the silent treatment. There were countless people who never heard an angry word from Mike but who had done him dirt, woke up politically dead one morning, and they didn't know exactly when or where it happened, but they realized there was a velvet shiv stuck in between the fifth and sixth rib, and they were politically bleeding. Lesson three, live on the edge. One of Madigan's gifts, knowing precisely what he can get away with without breaking the law especially when it came to him making bank as a tax lawyer on the side. Mike Madigan made tens of millions of dollars winning property tax bill reductions for uh, the owners of big buildings downtown. Joe Berrios, the county assessor, which sets these values. He's also chairman of the Cook County Democratic Party. Madigan was chairman of the Illinois Democratic Party. Mr. Berrios is raising them, and then Madigan's law firm coming in and reducing them and winning a chunk of the reduction, able to put in his own pocket a chunk of the reduction he won. Sometimes the outrage is not what they do that's illegal, it's what they do that's legal. Finally, lesson four, put your friends to work. Patronage is a pretty word for putting your friends in plump jobs. And Madigan sure loved him some patronage. In the city of broad shoulders, Mike was a mighty back scratcher trading jobs for loyalty. Delving down to the level of a conductor who should be given a pay raise, in Madigan's opinion. If the budget for mass transit in Illinois, the hundreds of millions of dollars in, in budget, you know, a nice budget you've got there, it would be a shame if something happened to it. Maybe Joe Jones over here really deserves a pay raise. These workarounds that, that he would come up with, he, he would step up to the line, but not over. Job scandals are how he got closest to real trouble during his speakership. He was never charged, but it's ultimately what did him in. Today's criminal complaint against ComEd puts Madigan squarely in the federal crosshairs. The state's largest electric company has admitted to arranging jobs for political allies of high-level elected state officials. We'll have new leadership in the state house soon, but because of his long list of successes and failures, we'll be talking about Mike Madigan long after. I am still disoriented as I contemplate an Illinois House of Representatives without Mike Madigan. The future of Illinois and Chicago is full of unknowns, but if you want to keep a gig going 50 years, now you know.